I just want to give you some tips on how to write a null and alternative hypotheses when you are working with hypothesis tests and you're starting to get into hypothesis tests. You really need to, to know how to write these null and alternative hypotheses, otherwise everything else after that really doesn't make sense. So in this video I'm just concentrating on how to write null and alternative hypotheses. Um, each one is called a hypothesis. When you talk to, about both of them at the same time you can say hypotheses. Um, before I get to the examples that I have down here, there are three things, or there's basically three different ways that your null and alternative hypotheses will look. Um, and I've got all three right here. And the, the, the first thing that I want to point out is that in your null hypothesis, and by the way, your null hypothesis is the one that has H with a little zero. That's pronounced H not. Um, <clears throat> so that's a little uh, notation and pronunciation for you. But in each of the H naughts or null hypotheses, you have an equal sign of some sort. Okay, and the first one that I showed you here, this one has mu, which is mean, is equal to some value k. This one, mu is less than or equal to some value k. And this one, mu is greater than or equal to some value k. And then your alternative hypotheses um, will have the complement to that. So this would be not equal to greater than or less than. So once again, if we take a look here, if your null hypothesis has an equal sign in it, then your alternative is not equal to. If your null hypothesis is less than or equal to, then your alternative is greater than. If your null hypothesis is greater than or equal to, then your alternative is less than. This is always going to be the case. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that mu is not always going to be the parameter that you're working with. This mu could also be uh, p for proportion, or it could be some other symbols as well. But right now I'm just using mu because that's usually where most people start when they talk about null and alternative or hypothesis testing in general. So I want to write these. And the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to look for the claim. Okay, The claim could show up the claim that is being tested could show up in the alternative or the null hypothesis, either one. It just depends on what the claim is saying. So let's take a look here at example number one. It says, a consumer analyst reports that the mean life of a certain type of automobile battery is not 74 months. So he's saying that it is not 74 months. This is the key word, is not 74 months. So the claim is right here. Okay, This is what he is claiming. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down. The claim is is not. In this case, is not leads me to this particular mathematical sentence. The mean is not equal to some value, and in this case 74. So when I write my null and alternative hypotheses, for this example, I'm going to start with the alternative because that's what the claim is. He's claiming that the mean is not equal to 74. And I'm actually going to write down claim right here. Okay, I like to write down where the claim is. That's something that I won't get into why in this particular video, but when you get to the very end of a hypothesis test, knowing what the claim is and w whether the claim is a part of the null or alternative is important because you're going to make a decision about the claim based on what happens with these hypotheses. So if the claim is saying that the mean is not equal to 74, that's in the alternative because of the not equal to, that means that the null hypothesis has to be mu is equal to 74 because these are the two symbols that match up. That's an example of how to write a null or alternative and alternative hypotheses. All right, let's try another one here. <clears throat> if I scroll down, a radio station publicizes that its proportion of local listening audience is greater than or equal to 39 percent. Well, the first thing I want to point out is that I'm not talking about a mean. I'm talking about a proportion. Up here I was looking at mean, but in this one I'm looking at a proportion. So instead of using mu, I'm going to use p. Um, but a radio station publicizes that the proportion of the local li listening audience is greater than or equal to 
39%. That's the claim. Well, that claim is going to be in my null hypothesis. They're saying that the proportion is greater than or equal to 39%. And that's where the claim is. Now, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, what you'll see uh, statisticians and do is, um, and most books will teach it this way too, even though it says 39% here, they'll write it as P is greater than or equal to 0.39 as opposed to a percent. So now my alternative is going to be P is less than 0.39. Okay, the null and alternative, the symbols have to uh, be complements to each other. This one's equal to, this one's not equal to, this one's greater than or equal to, so this one has to be less than. Okay, you will never see an equal to sign or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to sign in the alternative. It'll always be in the null hypothesis. So there's a couple of examples, basic examples of how to write a null and alternative hypotheses and a couple of little tips that should help you when you're writing them.